Well, a Fox News alert, a full House of Representatives vote today, perhaps, to impeach DHS Secretary Mayorkas could happen today, around 6 o'clock, marking what could be the first impeachment of a cabinet secretary in nearly 150 years. But with a very slim majority, Republicans can only afford to lose three votes. So do they have the votes? Let's talk to somebody who counts them. House Majority Whip Tom Emmer I was the first to push for it. He joins us now from D.C. Tom, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Okay, so Great to be with you. It's good to have you as well, um, Mr. Whip. So how's this going to work today? I, we're supposed to vote on the procedural rules this morning, uh, later this morning. Uh, and then uh, around uh, 5.50 uh, this afternoon, I, we're supposed to vote on a uh, uh, aid package for Israel, uh, our ally Israel, and on the impeachment of uh, Secretary Mayorkas. Okay. The big question is, as I mentioned a moment ago, you can only lose three votes because your majority is that big. Uh, and, you know, um, who is it? Uh, one of them, Ken Buck, is a hard no. Uh, David Joyce has not revealed his hand. Neither is Tom McClintock nor Dan Newhouse. Do you have the votes? Uh, I'm confident if we have our members here uh, that we should be able to do this. Uh, okay. And look, Steve, uh, it is time to hold Secretary Mayorkas accountable. We have no other way to do this. Uh, he will not resign, despite the fact that he has willfully refused to enforce our federal laws to secure our southern border. In fact, he's instructed his subordinates right. not to enforce the laws. Uh, it, this is not just uh, nonfeasance. This is malfeasance. This is active uh, neglect on the part of the secretary. And since he won't do the honorable thing and resign, uh, the House needs to hold him accountable by uh, through impeachment. It's the only choice we have. Well, a, constitu a couple of constitutional experts, uh, Jonathan Turley was on this program, and so uh, Michael Chertoff as well, uh, George Bush's uh, Department of Homeland Security secretary. And they both said, uh, don't impeach to the Republicans, because they said, uh, you might have a policy difference with them, but there's not enough evidence as defined by the Constitution. Yeah, well, I, that's why we have constitutional experts, and I, I, I love those guys. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan. But on this one, uh, you better look a little bit more closely at the process and the evidence. The process was deliberate. It was uh, thoughtful. Uh, it extended over a year. Uh, they studied the topic. I mean, I, I don't know that the American people understand the cost of this uh, invasion that's coming across our southern border, that's right. not my word, that's uh, Al Sharpton's word. He called it an invasion. That cost of it is almost a half a trillion dollars to the American people. Hmm. Uh, forget for a second, uh, don't, about the fentanyl uh, overdoses that we're seeing. Forget about the crime uh, or, again, I uh, just keep in mind, separate from that, you're talking about health care, you're talking mm -hmm. about housing, you're talking about education expense for illegal immigrants that uh, the American people are having to, sure. uh, to uh, cover. And when it comes to the constitutional experts, the evidence is very clear that this secretary has not just a difference of uh, policy, he's willfully refusing to enforce federal law that would secure our southern border. Okay. That is an impeachable offense. And it sounds like you could have a vote tonight. Uh, meanwhile, yesterday at this time, we were taking a look at the Senate proposal, bipartisan Senate bill, uh, to do something about migration and immigration. And I know a lot of Republicans are against it because Donald Trump is against it. But here's, here's the problem for you guys. Uh, the Border Patrol union came out and the acting CBP chief both came out and said that they're not, it's not perfect, but this is the best thing we've seen in decades. So are Republicans going to say that the Border Patrol Union and the acting CBP chief are wrong? Well, look, they can have their perspective, Steve. Uh, and we've it's got a lot of respect. It's their jobs, Tom. We've, well, and it's our job to uh, actually make sure the laws will accomplish what we're seeking to do. You have to reform the parole process, where the president has been abusing it, allowing uh, people to come across the border. You have to reinstate, uh, remain in Mexico. You have to end catch and release. And you have to reform our asylum laws. This so-called uh, uh, Senate deal only takes care of one thing. 
Uh, and by the way, it's codifying catch and release. Keep in mind uh, that the federal law requires our authorities to detain someone at the border, right. uh, detain them until their case is adjudicated. Uh, this administration, through Secretary Mayorkas, who has told his people to ignore that law and just release people, they've mm -hmm. released almost, uh, well, the 40 percent of the number. people they've released, they right. don't even know where they're at, uh, they Steve. So, again, I respect the Border Patrol. Our job is to uh, support them, they can have their opinion, but this is what we got elected for, and we need to hold the administration accountable. It's time right. to end this invasion at the southern border, Steve. All right. Congressman, you've got a really busy day. Thanks for getting up early and talking to us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.